Ya waktunya ya kita kita mulai ya. Oke, okay. uh, so last week ya yeah. last week we we already started with uh, introduction of uh, quantitative and qualitative analysis, right? We learned about uh, how uh, qualitative analysis are performed on uh, certain chemicals. Now, uh, this week, uh, we will be studying about analysis of group 1 cation. Okay? Group 1 cation. Now, uh, so, meaning uh, this week is only for cation. So, for cation. Only for uh, analysis of cation. Later, we will learn about uh, analysis of anion also okay now so uh, for the reagents that uh, that will be used for uh, analysis there there are three reagents uh, such as uh, hydrochloric acid hydrogen sulfide and then ammonium carbonate okay so uh, those three uh, acid you now these two are acid, but the, the third one is uh, salt, yeah, salt, ammonium carbonate. But uh, these three these three chemicals, uh, they can be used to analyze uh, group one cation. Now, so you can see here, right? Hydrogen, hydrochloric acid, hydrogen sulfide, uh, ammonium carbonate and we are trying to analyze cation so meaning the cation will will be reacting will be reacted with the anion of these three uh, chemicals so so it means that uh, the analysis will be re uh, uh, related with the solubility of their chlorides uh, their sulfides and then their uh, carbonates. Mm -hmm. So the the reaction, uh, the the analysis will be uh, related with the solubility, the solubility solubility of the chlorides, the sulfides, and the carbonates. Okay, now, so there are three cation that are in, uh, that are uh, classified as group one, uh, that will be lead, mercury, and silver. So you need to differentiate. Mercury, it has two types of mercury, mercury one and mercury two. So mercury 2 will be in the group 2, but mercury 1, it will be in the group 1, okay? So lead, mercury, and silver. And if you look at the periodic table, uh, it will be Pb, uh, Hg, mercury, Hg, Pb, Hg. Uh, silver will be Ag, yeah, argentum, plumbum. Mercury and Argentum. Okay. And let's start with lead first. Yeah, lead or PB. So in room temperature, at room temperature, uh, plumbum or lead, it, it will have a physical appearance like the one I put in the picture in the slide. So it, it, it is a gray metal, bluish gray metal, and it has high density. The density will be 11.48 gram per milliliter. This is at room temperature. Okay. So, so you remember there are three, three, uh, group reagents right but for plumbum for pb 
So you see here, the first one is, it is readily dissolved in medium concentrated nitric acid. Uh, by medium uh, concentrated nitric acid, it says here it's around eight molar. So when you mix this PB with nitric acid with around eight molar, it will become like this. It will it will dissolve. Yeah, it will dissolve. And you can see here when you reacted uh, the nitric acid with the uh, plumbum with the lab, it will also produce nitro nitrogen oxide gas. So if you see here, an arrow to the up, meaning it will have a nitrogen oxide gas yeah and then in here you can see there there are no precipitation yeah that's why it said readily dissolve because there is no precipitation if there is precipitation in here there will be a uh, arrow down yeah but we cannot see any arrow down uh, in this uh, reaction we can only see arrow up yeah Okay, finish this. Finish. Okay, I assume since you don't say anything, I assume you finish writing this one. Okay, now, so uh, as I mentioned before, yeah, from the explanation from the previous slide, uh, nitrogen oxide gas was formed when you uh, reacting. Uh, Plumbum with uh, hydrogen, with uh, nitri nitrogen, nitrogen, uh, HNO3, yeah, HNO3 uh, acid with eight molar, and when you mix it with air, yeah, see this gas, when you mix it with air, air means is udara, yeah, when you mix it with air, the nitrogen oxide gas will be changing from the colorless nitrogen oxide uh, it became a uh, red color because uh, before uh, you have no no but then after you reacted with air you have no2 okay no2 so this is this is one way you uh, analyze the cation of plumbum. Yeah, plumbum. You react. It, you you react it with uh, HNO3. Yeah, and then after you react with HNO3, it will produce uh, NO gas. The NO gas that are produced are col uh, are colorless, colorless. And then when you reacting when the NO reacted with air the surrounding air which contain oxygen it will oxidize the gas into no2 so the colorless nitrogen oxide it will become a, the red color of no2 so there are times that when you try to uh, analyze a chemical you cannot do it in one step Sometimes you need to do it several steps before you are able to draw a conclusion what type of uh, chemicals that, that you are having. Okay.
Okay. Now, so let's see. Uh, we have let one. Okay. Now we have let two. Now in let two here, yeah, uh, we are trying. Uh, so remember, if you remember, right? So we we already reacting the lead with HNO3 with a uh, nitric acid, right? And when you reacting uh, lead with nitric acid, it will uh, have a PBNO3, yeah, PBNO3. So the lead nitrate that we have, yeah, or lead acetate we can use it to further analyze lead here so before 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 you trying to analyze lead yeah you can at at first you can uh, uh, react it lead with uh, nitric acid first or you can react lead with acetate acid first so when you reacted lead with those two uh, acid, it will produce lead nitrate or lead acetate. Okay, and both here for uh, for analysis, you only need 0.25 molar. Yeah. Now, so these two, yeah, one of these two. If you react it with hydrochloric acid, yeah, it will produce a white precipitate. So, for example, here, so those two meaning we have PB two plus, right? And PB two plus plus uh, two uh, chloride negative, uh, it will produce PbCl two. And you can see here there is a down arrow. Uh, down arrow meaning you will have a precipitation. Yeah, precipitation, and this is in cold, cold. So meaning, if it's in cold, then uh, it won't. So mean it, it means like the PbCl dua, the plumbum chloride here, it is not soluble because it it form a white precipitation in cold. You can finish this one? Yeah. I should yes. be finished, right? Okay. Now, so this is what we have, right? This is a, a precipitation with a color of white, yeah? White precipitation. Now, this precipitation, yeah, uh, plumbum chloride, uh, you can make it soluble, but it has to be in hot water. Because remember here, right? If you have PBCL2, it will have a white precipitate in cold. So if you uh, if you warm a water, like pour out this PBCL2 in a hot water, uh, it will it will become a soluble soluble. But remember here, you can see here, uh, the solubility is thirty three point four gram per liter at hundred hundred degrees Celsius. But at 20 degrees Celsius, you only have 9.9 .9 gram per liter. Yeah. And then when it's cooling down again, it will make a needle like crystal. So, so it's only soluble in hot water. So once the water becomes cooling, yeah. Uh, the PBCL2 it will it will changing from a precipitate into a long needle like crystal. Yeah. 
Now, so let in here, yeah, uh, it in water, yeah, it, it, it is only soluble when it's uh, hot water, right? But when you mix lead with concentrated hydrochloric acid, then the lead will be soluble. Why it is soluble? Because when you mix PBCl2 yeah, with a concentrated hydrochloric acid, it will form a tetrachloroplumbed ion. And through tetrachloroplumbed ion, of course, this is will be soluble. Okay? But it has to be concentrated hydrochloric acid. Finish this one? Yes. Okay. Now, now, how about plumbum and hydrogen sulfide? Yeah, hydrogen sulfide. So when you react plumbum with hydrogen sulfide, it will form a plumbum sulfide. And you can see here, it has a down arrow. So when it has down arrow, it means it will make a precipitate. In this case, if you react plumbum with hydrogen sulfate, it will uh, it will form a black precipitate. And the black precipitate is called plumbum sulfate. Yeah. Now, if you uh, if if there is a mineral acid, yeah, present in here, right? Because maybe, maybe sometimes the hydrogen sulfate that, that you are using are not, uh, it doesn't have a good purity. Uh, so maybe it has a strong mineral acid also. So the precipitate will be incomplete. So meaning uh, it won't be like a, a, a clear precipitate. Uh, why is that? Because uh, more hydrogen ions are formed. So if more hydrogen ions are formed, then the precipitate will be incomplete. So if you want to test plumbum uh, with hydrogen sulfate, it, it has to be hydrogen pure hydrogen sulfate. Yeah. Uh, so, so make sure that there, there are no uh, strong mineral acid that are, that are present in the solution. Uh, so that what you have, it will be a black precipitate of uh, lead sulfate. Finish this? Finish here. Yeah, yeah. Now, so let's see here. 
So what you have here are in solution, right? Are in solution. So what happened if you mix a uh, lead with gas? Yeah. Uh, so you you mix a uh, hydrogen sulfate gas uh, with a white chloride, white lead chloride. Remember the lead chloride is a precipitation, right? It's a pre precipitation. And what happened if you if you introduce a gas, hyd uh, hydrogen sulfate gas uh, inside, then uh, you will still form a, a plumbum sulfide, black lead uh, sulfide that are uh, precipitate. Yeah. So you can either do this in solution or you can do this in gas form. Yeah. Both will form a black precipitate. Yeah. Both will form a black precipitate. Okay. Did you guys finish this one? Finish? Not yet? Okay. Why don't you uh, try? Because uh, you need to write it down uh, during the lecture time so that uh, you can at least get the logic uh, behind the analysis because if you just hear uh, what I explain uh, you won't be able to follow the 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 step of the analysis yeah Okay, now, so what happened if you use a, a large amount of chloride? So when you do the test, yeah, uh, you will put like a larger amount of chloride. So it, it, this means like, for example, if you put saturated potassium chloride, yeah, saturated potassium chloride. So you can see here, this is the reaction. So you have a plumbum, the cation of plumbum, uh, you react with hydrogen sulfide, and then you have large amount of chloride in the reaction. So instead of a plumbum sulfide, the black plumbum sulfide that, that is formed, the one that will be form, forming is plumbum sulfate chloride, so lead sulfo chloride. And this lead sulfo chloride, the color is red. So it's different from plumbum sulfide. Plumbum sulfide, the color is black, but this lead sulfo chloride, the color is uh, red. Yeah? But the requirement is you should have larger amount of chloride. And you can see here, we can see it in this reaction. Yeah.
surat sulfo chloride Until this point, uh, do you guys understand every part of it? Do you guys understand? Or do you guys have any questions? I assume you guys understand, right? Okay. Since uh, there are no more questions, okay? I assume... So for the midterm, uh, so you need to prepare it from uh, prepare it every day. So so you you, you cannot do a system kebut semalam for this class, yeah? Why? Because there are so many memorization for the first part of this class. So the midterm, uh, the midterm problem will be many. Uh, I will be asking you guys like how you analyze this, like what happened if you're reacting this with this, uh, sort of like that. So you need to memorize it. So you cannot, you cannot like uh, tomorrow you will have your midterm and you you just study the night before. You cannot do that. Okay, you will fail this class if you do that, uh, unless you do some cheating. But because this class, uh, the 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 test will be closed book, yeah, closed book. So you need to memorize it, yeah. This is only like a re a gentle reminder to you guys, so that you you will study from the beginning. You you don't do uh system kebut semalam, okay? Don't do that anymore. Uh, yeah. It is okay when you have like a online test. But since we will have offline tests, then you have to study. Okay? Yeah. Finish this? Finish, man. Okay, finish, yeah? Okay, now. So, so remember from, from previous one, we have uh, hydrogen sulfide. We reacting with pl plumbum uh, with, the, with larger amount of uh, chloride present. Then we have plumbum sulfo, lead sulfo chloride, right? Lead sulfo chloride. Then this lead sulfo chloride, you can you can decompose. Uh, how we can decompose lead uh, sulfide chloride if we add concentrated nitric acid. So if we add concentrated nitric acid, yeah, the plumbum sulfide will be formed again. So the, we have two types of uh, precipitation will be formed. First is plumbum sulfate. Uh, the other is plumbum chloride. And then if we add again uh, with uh, so, uh, hydrogen sulfate, then the plumbum sulfate is, uh, is, is formed again. Okay, so we can have this one yeah, lead sulfur chloride, then the lead sulfur chloride, we can decompose again. How we can decompose it? By adding a concentrated nitric acid. Yeah. Now, what is the color of this one? The plumbum chloride, lead chloride, what is the color? What is the color of this one? Hitam. Oh, no. Ini yang hitam. This, this one is black. How about this one? Red, man. Red, man. Hmm? Red, red. Are you sure? That, that, that is the beginning. The beginning of what we study. What is the color of this? White. White, man. White, man. Yeah. So you need to... 
you need to pay attention with the color because that color will uh, will tell you what type of chemicals that you have yeah if red what you have is lead sulfur chloride if black what do you have if black color black color is what lead what PBS ya mem plumbum sulfur. Yes, lead sulfide. And what white color will be lead chloride. Okay, so so you need to differentiate. So this this analysis, yeah, you will have you will have three color that you need to remember. The black one is lead sulfide. The red the red one is lead sulfur chloride. Now the white one is lead chloride yeah so so you need to you need to differentiate these three things yeah So that's why I, I keep telling you guys, you wrote down, yeah, you wrote down that all the things that uh, we we discussed today, so, so that while you wrote down, you try to understand the step, yeah, the step yeah. for the uh, analysis, yeah. Langsung dikasih makan dia nanti ya Wah kalau dia mau ya Wah Oke, okay, finish. Finish ready now. Hmm? Yeah. Finish. Oke, okay, so so that you remember during your study at home ya, yeah, remember down arrow meaning precipitation. Uh, up arrow meaning gas, forming a gas. Now, if we have iron like this, it mean it is soluble. Ya, yeah, soluble. Oke, okay. so now let's see here. This is the lead sulfate. Ya, yeah. the lead sulfate. So remember, ya, yeah, before in, in in previous slide, ya, yeah, I mentioned that you can decompose also uh, lead sulfide. Now, lead sulfate, how you can decompose, you reacted the lead sulfide with a concentrated nitric acid so this is the color yeah uh, this is the color so when you uh when you react lead sulfate the lead the black precipitate with with a concentrated nitric acid you will have a white a white precipitate of sulfur Yeah, white precipitate of sulfur, and you can see here from the reaction, right? You have lead sulfate. You react with a uh, hydrogen nitrate, but remember, it has to be concentrated hydrogen nitrate. So it will form a cation of lead, yeah, Pb two plus, and then uh, NO three minus, but then it will form a sulfur and it has a down arrow yeah sulfur down arrow so that's why it will form a white color of sulfur and also what kind of gas it will be producing here nitrogen 
oxide gas. Yeah, so it will form a white sulfur, white precipitate sulfur, and then nitrogen oxide gas. Yeah. So for this class, I will try to make an illustration like this so, so that when you uh, listen to the lecture, you can uh, also like imagine like how, how everything is uh, performing, yeah? Okay, finish this. Finish this slide. Okay. Now, so let's see here. So how about lead sulfate? Yeah. Uh, how we can form uh, a lead sulfate now so if you have lead sulfide yeah you react like lead sulfide with hydrogen peroxide i put it here this is the bottle uh three percent hydrogen uh, peroxide the black lead sulfide it will turns into white color yeah so what is this white color this white color is what we call lead sulfate. And this is the chemical drawing of it. Yeah. So imagine you have lead sulfide. Now lead sulfide, the PBS, yeah, PBS. Uh, the PBS, you reacted with H2O2, lead hy hydrogen peroxide, 3% hydrogen peroxide. Then the black color will turn into white precipitate. And then the white precipitate is identified as lead sulfate. And this is the chemical drawing of it. Okay, finish this. Finish? Finish, ma'am. Okay. Now, so uh, this is the reaction, yeah? Uh, plumbum sulfide, yeah, lead sulfide. Uh, this is the precipitation. We add it with hydrogen peroxide 3%. And it will form plumbum uh, lead sulfate, yeah? And you can see here, this is a uh, precipitate. So... This is a black color. So you when you react it with this, it will become a white color. Yeah. Okay. Now, now let's see lead and hydrogen sulfate. Yeah, lead it it is not soluble in hydrogen sulfate. Why? Because when you mix lead and hydrogen sulfate, it will form lead sulfate, right? So it is the great insol insolubility of lead sulfate in water. So 
So if you have lead sulfate, right, uh, you what you have, it will be a uh, 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 precipitate, right? And then when you have lead sulfate, you react it with a uh, chloride, yeah, yeah, chloride. It will form a white lead chloride. So we have here the color is lead chloride, yeah. So you you can see here uh, if if uh if you have if you want to differentiate yeah differentiate between lead sulfate and lead chloride you can differentiate it by by using color uh, because lead sulfate you have black color black precipitation but lead chloride you have a white color yeah so so you can see here how you differentiate these two is by looking at the color. Okay, finish. Yeah, let's continue. And then uh, one thing that uh, this is a precaution. Yeah, precaution. If you if you will be working with uh, hydrogen sulfate, hydrogen sulfate is a highly poison poisonous gas. Yeah. Uh, so if you if you if you want to react lead with uh, hydrogen sulfide you need to react it in a chamber fume chamber i don't know i think we don't have it in our lab right but in case you need to work with hydrogen sulfate try to work it close to the window so that whatever gas that are formed uh, from your reaction it, it will it will go directly to outside yeah so you have to working on the on a good a good a good room that have a good ventilation room okay so so th that's why here every precaution uh, must be observed to prevent the escape of hydrogen sulfate into the air of laboratory since this is a poisonous gas yeah so that's why you have so ideally uh, you have to work in the fume chamber yeah I don't think you have a experiment with uh, hydrogen sulfate, right? There, 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 there are no... Ex so did you guys start your uh, lab yet? Not yet, right? Uh, it's after, uh, after midterm probably, right? So I, I don't think you have a hydrogen sulfate gas, okay? Okay, now, now let's see ammonia solution. Yeah, ammonia solution. So what happens if you have a plumbum, a lead, you react with ammonia, yeah? It will form a lead hydroxide. And this lead hydroxide, you can see this is a down arrow. 
So meaning you will have a precipitation here. So so it means that the lead hydro hydroxide is insoluble. It's not soluble, but insoluble. Finish this? Finish? Okay. Now, so what happens if you have sodium hydroxide? So if you react a uh, lead 2 plus, yeah, PB2 plus, with uh, sodium hydroxide, you will also uh, form a lead hydroxide, a precipitate of like lead hydroxide. Okay? Now, how we can identify further for this uh, lead hydroxide? If you react light hydroxide with uh, with a uh, excess reagent, yeah. So you have this right, and you react more larger amount of sodium hydroxide, then it will form a, a tetrahydroxoplumbate. Uh, this is tetrahydroxoplumbate. Remember, I mentioned before, if you have ion, ion like this, then it will be soluble. Okay? With a little amount of hydroxide, the plumbum will have, uh, will form precipitation. But with a larger amount of hydroxide, the plumbum will dissolve, will be dissolved. Uh, why it dissolve? Because it will form tetrahydroxoplumbate. Yeah. So also, re also uh, just keep in mind, whenever you have this yeah, ion in your reaction, it, it is definitely soluble. <coughs> Sorry, yeah, since I am at my own house, my own home, uh, definitely there will be some distraction, yeah, but it doesn't matter, okay? Okay, did you guys finish this? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma so, so, until this part, did you guys have any question? Or, or everything is okay? It is clear. Pardon me? It is clear, man. It, it is clear? Is it clear? According to me, yes, ma'am. Okay, good. Let's continue. Okay, now, uh, what are the characteristics of lead hydroxide? So you can see here, uh, lead hydroxide has ampoteric character. Yeah, what is the meaning by empoteric character? Character meaning that uh, if you add uh, lead hydroxide with more hydrogen peroxide, 
it will form tetrahydroxoplumbate that is uh, soluble in water, right? But if you may, uh, if you have a uh, lead hydroxide, hydroxide with uh, uh, with uh, a little bit uh, hydroxide, it will form a a black precipitate, which is uh, which is uh, which can which which is uh, can also uh, related with lead dioxide. Yeah, so you can see here. This is what it, what it means by ampoteric. Yeah, ampoteric because uh, a little bit amount of hydroxide, you will have a, a precipitate. Yeah, more hydroxide, it will form a tetrahydroxide uh, plumbate. Yeah. And then further, if you have tetrahydroxide plumbate, uh, you can also oxidizing this uh, tetrahydroxide plumbate and it will form a lead dioxide. And this lead dioxide, it is a black precipitate. So it can be like precipitate, dissolve, precipitate again. Yeah. Uh, so this is what it means by ampoteric character. Uh, so... Uh, it, it seems like it cannot made up her mind, yeah, his mind, because it can from precipitate changing to dissolve and then changing again to uh, precipitate just by adding like a uh, hydroxide, yeah, a little bit hydroxide, it will have precipitate, uh, precipitate color, preci white precipitate. You add more hydroxide, it will have a, a solution. So it will dissolve uh, in the form of tetrahydroxopalumbate. And then you add again, it can oxidize. Yeah, oxidize the bifilene bifi bifi uh, bifi of the lead. And it will become a lead dioxide. And this is also a black precipitate. Yeah, so this is what it means by ampoteric character of the lead hydroxide. Yeah. Finish this one. Yeah. Okay. So now. So you can see here, this is the reaction. We have a uh, lab that. Yeah. Oh, a second. I, I don't remember. Uh, tetrahydroxoplumbate, right? So we have tetrahydroxoplumbate. You add with hydrogen peroxide, uh, it will become a, a lead oxide, lead, lead dioxide, and this is. Uh, a black precipitate, yeah. Uh, but also, te uh, let tetrahydroxoplumbate here. If you uh, add with a uh, thiosulfate, yeah, uh, it will become it will dissolve, yeah. It, it will dissolve. If you add it with a uh, hydrogen peroxide, it will have a uh, it will have a precipitation. If you add thiosulfate, it will have a solution yeah so there will be no uh, precipitation okay So that's why I keep give you a gentle reminder, right? Uh, because the nature of this class, you cannot do it system. You cannot do system kebut semalam. Yeah, you cannot. You def definitely cannot do that because there are so many uh, material that you need to understand. So you can see here, we only study lead right now. We we almost it, it almost like uh 
almost one hour. So maybe like 55 minutes and we can only cover lab. You remember we have three, right? What, what else we have in group one? Lab, Mercury one, and then and the, silver. And silver. silver. Yeah, silver. So, so you need to, you need to, uh, study you need to study uh, from the beginning and then you cannot rely on only what i explain in class you need to find other source also because i won't be able to cover the whole thing in class okay so i need your cooperation uh, you need to also uh, independently study by yourself yeah <clears throat> Okay, uh, I'm getting all the sources for this class from uh, from uh, from a book. It called uh, Fogel. Yeah, Fogel. I think you can you can ask from your senior. Yeah, from your uh, kakak class if they have the the copy, the PDF file, so that you can you can also independently study from there. Okay. <clears throat> now, so we already uh, react the lead with hydrogen sulfide, yeah, hydroxide, ammonia. So now let's see with sodium carbonate. So what will be happening? So if we react uh, lead, with sodium carbonate, it will form a precipitate. Uh, the, pre the precipitate is called lead hydroxide. So there will be two precipitate. The first one is lead hydroxide. The second is lead carbonate. And then you can see here, there, there, are, there is a up arrow, meaning it will also uh, produce a carbon dioxide gas. Okay, so three things, yeah, will be formed if you react lead with sodium carbonate. The first one is lead hydroxide, and it will be a precipitate. The second one will be lead uh, carbonate, and this is also a precipitate. And the third one is carbon dioxide gas. Okay. Now, if you further react this precipitate with nitric acid, only a dilute nitric acid, yeah, you don't need a concentrated nitric acid, you only need dilute nitric acid it will dissolve the precipitation. So the precipitate will be changing into a solution. It will dissolve, but it will also uh, form a carbon dioxide gas. Yeah. Finish this? Not yet? Okay. I will wait a little bit because the I, I'm I also uh, understand, right? You need to you you need to take time to digest all the information that uh, that you receive today. Okay. So, yeah. I'm sorry, I want to ask, ma'am. Uh, yeah. There is in the uh, first reaction, ma'am, uh, there is uh, two precipitate that 
uh, form them. So how we can different the both of them? Oh. There is the because there is a precipitate, right? Okay. Yes. Uh, what is the color? I don't think you can differentiate this these two uh, precipitate. Yeah, I don't think because both of uh, both both are the the it, it doesn't mention about the color. Okay. Because uh, this sodium carbonate, right? We only want to uh, we only want to analyze a lab, so it doesn't matter whether it form uh, lead hydroxide or uh, lead carbonate. Okay, so I don't think you can differentiate because there is no uh, there is no different color on it unless you use a certain instrument. Yeah, certain instrument. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Finish this one. Finish. Finish, ma'am. Now, so we also have flame tests for a lab. The color is pale blue. So remember last week we studied about fl flame, right? Flame test, right? Uh, we can also test plume boom with, uh, with flame test. And uh, the color is pale blue. But of course, uh, it will be inconclusive because there, there, there are many other metal that, are, uh, that have a color of pale blue. So it's better that you use, uh, you combine, right? You sort of get an information by reacting uh, lead with uh, hydrogen sulfide, for example. Uh, then you want to make a definite conclusion by doing a flame test. So uh, if you get a pale blue, you combine with other information, then you will know that for, for certain that what you have is lead. Okay, now, so now let's move to second element, which is mercury one. Now, mercury, the color is silver white, yeah, silver white, and uh, it's not definite solid. So it will like a liquid metal. Uh, have, have you ever got, uh, uh, did you guys ever uh, broke thermometer before? thermometer with mercury inside yeah uh, if you if you if you accidentally broke thermometer mercury you can see like a, a silver color liquid that can roll in the desk right but don't touch it because mercury is dangerous right uh, mercury can cause cancer uh, so don't ever touch it so if you if you accidentally broke it just take a sponge yeah sponge that you used to uh, uh was uh this is right put it put it in uh, on top of the mercury so it will absorb and then use a, a hand uh you can use a uh, gloves right uh, get the 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 sponge and then put it in the in the spatial container so that you can you don't you cannot throw it uh throw it to the ground because that's a dangerous material right okay so mercury is a silver white uh, liquid metal. So it's a liquid metal. Uh, density, it has a density of 13.534 uh, gram per milliliter at 25 degrees Celsius. Yeah. When you react mercury with hydrochloric acid, 
or dilute sulfuric acid, it, it won't be reacted. Yeah, so you cannot use hydrochloric acid or dilute sulfuric acid to, to test mercury. So the only uh, uh, acid that you, you can use is nitric acid. So if, you, if I ask you, what are, what, uh, what, what is the acid that are react with mercury? Then your answer should be nitric acid because hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acid uh, are not reacted with uh, mercury. Okay. Okay, next. So if you have mercury, right, you reacted with concentrated nitric acid, which is 8 molar, and you don't have to uh, heat the reaction. Uh, it will form mercury 2 plus. So meaning that you have a, a solid metal here. Uh, when you react with nitric acid, it will dissolve, yeah? it will dissolve because you can see here it form iron. So if whenever it form iron, it will dissolve. And then it will form a nitrogen oxide gas and another solution, okay? Now, uh, what happens if you put hot concentrated sulfuric acid? Hot, remember, hot, yeah, hot. So hot meaning is you put mercury, and then you heat the mercury and the sulfuric acid. It is also dissolve the mercury. Yeah. So dissolve the mercury, but instead of uh, nitrogen oxide, it will form a sulfur dioxide gas. But remember, it has to be hot. Uh, so you can see the difference, right? Uh, this one, coal, you can react it readily but for sulfuric acid you need to heat it so in order for uh, the reaction can can perform uh, immediately you need to raise the temperature of the reaction yeah you need to raise the temperature of the reaction now finish this one not, not yet okay Finish? Not yet? Okay, let's continue, right? 
So remember, we have a hot concentrated uh, sulfuric acid, right? It will form a mercury 2, uh, two plus, yeah? And then sulfur dioxide gas. Next, what happened, yeah? Uh, if we... Uh, if we want to uh, detect this, yeah, how can we do that? How we can analyze the mercury one uh, cation? Yeah, so we will be studying the reaction for that. Okay, now the first one is we have dilute hydrochloric acid. Yeah, so if we have the um, mercury. 2, 2 plus, we reacted with uh, hydrogen uh, hydrochloric acid, we will have a precipitation. The pre precipitation is called mercury 1 chloride or calomel. Yeah, calomel. So we can get a conclusion that the mercury here yeah, is insoluble in dilute acid. Uh, because it form a, a white precipitation of mercury one chloride or or usually what we call it calomel. Okay, finish this. Okay, now, so remember we have this one, right? Mercury uh, one chloride or calomel. What happened we if we react mercury one chloride with ammonia? So when we uh, react uh, mercury one chloride with ammonia, it will form a mercury metal and mercury 2 ammonia yeah mercury 2 uh, ammonia chloride so you can use this reaction to differentiate between mercury 1 and mercury 2 uh, because mercury 1 it belongs to group 1 cation mercury 2 here this is mercury 2 uh, it belong to uh, group to cation yeah jadi so here you can see mercury 1 is converted partly to mercury 2 and partly to mercury metal so this reaction uh, you can use it to analyze the mercury 1 and mercury 2 uh, so if you react a certain chemical with ammonia uh, it will if it form a uh, mercury metal so it means in the in the in the wall of your uh, reaction uh, tube yeah you can see like a, a a gray metal yeah a gray uh, a gray metal uh, it will con consider as a mercury metal so meaning that the the chemical that you have is mercury 1 because when you, mercury 1 if you react with ammonia uh, one part it will uh, convert it to mercury metal. Uh, the other part will be converted to a precipitate of mercury two metal. Yeah. Okay. Finish this one. Not yet. Okay. Not yet, ma'am. Okay.
Okay, Finis? Okay. Now, uh, so I already uh, mentioned, yeah, reaction five is used to differentiate uh, mercury one, yeah, mercury one uh, from lead two and silver one also. Okay. Now, so remember we have mercury one chloride, H2SHG2Cl2, yeah, mercury one chloride. Now, mercury one chloride here. It will be dissolved in aqua regia. Now, what is aqua regia? Aqua regia is a mix between nitric acid and then hydrogen chloride. Yeah. So if you have a mer uh, a mer mercury one chloride, right? Uh, mix it with uh, aqua regia. Uh, it will form a 3HGCl2, mercury chloride. So, it, so you see this is uh, Hg2Cl2, right? If you mix it with aqua regia, it will form uh, HgCl2 uh, or you call it mercury 2 chloride. Yeah, so it means like the mercury one if you mix it with aqua regia it will change into mercury two and also uh, the nitrogen oxide gas will be formed it will it, it, it form a nitrogen oxide gas yeah uh, so this is this is also an interesting reaction right uh, it, it means like you can see you can analyze mercury one chloride by by reacting the mercury one chloride with aqua regia, yeah. Because from precipitation, it will dissolve uh -huh. and changing into mercury two uh -huh. chloride, and then you can see there will be a bubble, and the bubble uh, will be identified as nitrogen oxide gas, yeah. Nitrogen oxide gas. Finish this? Finish, ma'am. Okay, one more slide, okay? Before we finish, uh, we stop our class because I know this. there are so many information that uh, you need to understand, okay? So uh, I guess to help you study independently, uh, I want you guys uh, as a routine test, yeah, uh, to find uh, what are the reaction to identify silver. Because for this class, we already study uh, with lead and mercury, right? So what I want you to do is uh, you, uh, you try to find what are the reaction for, uh, for identifying silver. And then uh, I gave you one week, yeah? One week, so you should be able to uh, submit your routine test uh, into SIPDA yeah, uh, by next week, by next Friday. Okay. Uh, you can do it like by writing, yeah, writing hand, and then you just like take a picture and then uh, convert it into PDF. Okay. Okay. I guess uh, why don't we just stop our class? Yeah stop our class because um, I know probably you guys already like uh, uh, tired listening to me talking for the like one and a half hour almost right I think one and a half hour right so I think you uh, th that will be our your routine task uh, 
So remember, uh, the routine test will help you also prepare for your midterm test. Yeah, because even though I don't explain in class, right, uh, you require to know that. So that's why you need to study independently. Okay. Uh, is there any question uh, until this part? Ma'am, yeah? uh, I want to ask you for join me in SIPDA, ma'am. I haven't joined the SIPDA. Oh, okay. You you haven't joined the SIPDA. Your name is Sylvia Gracia yes, Sembiring. Okay. Did you send me the, the username, your username? Not not yet, ma'am. Okay. Why don't you send me uh, your username in our group? Yeah. In our WhatsApp group so that I can uh, input, enroll your name in, in SIPDA. Okay. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Okay. So let's stop our class. Don't forget the routine test. I'm going to immediately make the link for you to submit the uh, assignment and it will be due next week. Yeah. Okay. Okay. If there is no more question, uh, see you next week. Okay. Bye.